Here's what we're talking about today on Daily Blast Live. Crazy moments caught on camera. From a man trying to grab a barista through a drive through window to a mom calling out a fast food worker. Really, like, you're going to not take my order. But was she in the wrong? What if there was a simple drug that could make everyone less selfish? Would you take it? Plus, would you change something about your personality if you could? Todd and Julie Chrisley start serving time, but did they catch a huge break with cushy prisons? And best-selling author and alternative medicine advocate Deepak Chopra will be here live. Oh my gosh. Get real. No, no. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. We are starting with some viral videos today. So up first, a man in Washington state has been arrested. This is a terrifying video. So surveillance, this is what happened. This video went viral, okay? The video shows a man attempting to kidnap a barista at a drive through near Seattle. The barista pulls her hand back inside, foiling the attempt, and the man in the video drops his change. Now look closer. You can see the man through a looped zip tie towards the barista to try and drag her through the window. Now, police posted the footage and tips from the community did lead to the arrest. Erica, you're shaking your head. I mean, it's not shocking. I mean, you have to be vigilant at all times, unfortunately, and you can't trust anyone. Um, this is just crazy. Clearly, this is a deranged individual with very identifiable marks on his arm. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I'm glad that she's okay and that he was apprehended. Uh, it, it, makes, it makes me scared, Sam, as somebody with a young daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I was saying it made me think about uh, that, that story that uh, Gabrielle Union told in her, in her first book, mm. uh, We're Gonna Need More Wine, about uh, she was working in a store and there was a guy that was milling around that, you know, African-American uh, young cat. And she was like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that towards my own people. And she went against her own instincts and he did what her instincts were telling her he would do. And I, I, the idea of young women working alone, I think should not be a concept. And I think in the, if we need to write that in the law, we should. But I don't like the idea of one young anything working anywhere by themselves because something like this could happen. And how long until help would have even known that she was gone. This woman was working alone. And right. I think every woman in this studio knows what that gut instinct feels like. Mm -hmm. I know that I don't like to be alone in an elevator uh, with a man. And I know that sounds like I'm painting with a broad brush. Whatever. But we've Whatever. had, women have had so many instances since they were young up until, unfortunately, you know, my mom, she's in her 70s, where you feel like you're prey. So I'm glad that this woman is okay. We do have another drive through video that's gone viral. This time a mom was at a Panera Bread drive through when her child began screaming. The employee refused to take her order. Take a listen. So you are gonna refuse to take my order because my child was screaming? Yes, I have the right to do that. If you're more than welcome to come inside or you can place an order online and we'll make it for you. And what is really like, you're gonna not take my order? Yes, ma'am, that is what I'm saying. Okay. All right, well, I do have this on video and I will be emailing corporate because that's just like completely rude. I okay. cannot come inside because my daughter does not have shoes on. Do you understand that? No, I understand, but you're also more than welcome to order through uh, online as well. So you want me to take an extra 20 minutes and order online? So the majority of the comments are actually on the are not on the mom's side. Lots of people were saying that the employee should have the right to refuse service. But we want to know what you think. Who is the right in this situation? Jeff, look, I have two kids and I'm always sticking up for the parent side of things. But in this particular instance, I'm not going to right. The guy could have took the order. They were obviously having a conversation while the kid's screaming at that point. Right. They could have just been like, hey, listen, could you give me my order now? My kids always scream when I go through the drive through I've never had this problem. He might have been having a bad day. She might have been having a bad day. But the response is not to say, I'm going to get you fired from emailing corporate. And instead of your mind going to, hey, now that we're talking, could I just place my order, man? I'm having a bad day. My kid, it's, it's hard enough being a mom. Your first instinct is, let me put this on TikTok and maybe get some notoriety. 
notoriety from this. I don't like where society's going with this. We don't handle things the way we should by communicating with each other. We want to get notoriety and put it on TikTok and get a little fame and shame the other person. And you know what? I'm shaming the mom in this case. I disagree with you completely. Ooh, talk to now, I do agree wholeheartedly that she should not of attempted to threaten him by emailing corporate and also going to social media. I'm fully against that full stop. But that's the whole point. That's my point. I don't think she would have done that if he wouldn't have pushed her into a corner. First of all, you can tell that the baby's like 18 months, two years old. I know that cry. A meltdown completely shuts a mother down, probably a father too, a caretaker, whoever. It makes you annoyed. You just want to get the food and you want to get the heck out of there. I don't think he de-escalated the situation by immediately shutting her down and saying, I'm not going to serve you. That made her go from a zero to a 10 and pushed her in a corner where she wanted to threaten him. And, was and it wrong? Zero to 10 and 10 is TikTok? I and think that's getting wrong. you fired? I think that's, that's embarrassing. Wrong, but what's wrong with him with this power move of I'm not going to take your order? No, I'm with you. I, it could have been settled. But at this point, they were communicating. Just say, hey, guy, we're communicating How now. How about Let's... come from a place of compassion? But then say, once you start to TikTok, you're already escalated totally. to that point. But that happened after the fact, and I don't agree with him. But we don't know what it. happened before that. We only have that part of the video. Yeah. That's true, but going off what I see... It would have been great. I've been in so many situations with other parents working in retail, working in drive throughs working at Jamba Juice, where I have seen a mother, because I used to babysit, at her yeah. wit's end. Right. And I've always come from a place of how can I help? And I think by him just being like, I'm not going to take your order, to me, rubbed me the wrong way. I You're think right. he was in the wrong. I get it. Okay, all right. I, yeah. <laughs> like, I think I made my I point. was just yeah. going back and forth <laughs> like, hey, I, it. I think both are in the wrong. I was I'll like, say that. mom versus dad are fighting. <laughs> no, I'm a parent too, and I'm always no, no, no. Uh, on the right. side. Yeah, totally. But it's like, we can't, TikTok and Instagram aren't the first thing totally. to go to. And like, I'm emailing corporate. You don't even know what that means. <laughs> that I agree with. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's another one that I think <laughs> chaps a lot of people's hides. Mm, what year is this? I don't know why oh, wow. I that. City okay. slicker down there. <laughs> Do you tip your food delivery drivers and how much? Well, this next viral video is from a former DoorDash driver who posted videos where he confronts customers who do not tip or tip very little. He called it no tip, no trip. Take a look. You ever heard of no tip, no trip? How much is the tip on this order? Yeah, that ain't enough when it's zero degrees outside and it's icy and I got to drive my car and wait for it. Uh, I think it was two bucks. Oh, and it showed up as 250 and that usually means there's no tip on there. Okay. I was just yeah. wondering, is there any reason why there's no tip on there? No, uh, there's... Have you ever heard of no tip, no trip? Okay. For Brianna? Uh, yeah. Um, you ever heard of no tip, no trip? He also posted this video clip showing the non-tipper orders sitting on the shelf of a restaurant. Now, in one of the videos, he actually gives away some of the food rather than delivering it. So what do you all think of this delivery driver and what he did, Erica? I co-sign this. Yeah. I co-sign. I know it's extreme. What? Yeah, I know it's extreme, but he's proving a point. And anytime we have this conversation, it's people, people gonna come for me on Twitter. I don't care. It, I, there are, are a mil, maybe a million reasons for why you need your food delivered. And that's generally what the response is. I have this situation. I need my food delivered. But can you put yourself in the, the shoes and vehicle and also the gas station of the person who may also have uh, just as many reasons for why they're out there trying to make a buck. This is this needs to be absolved through the company so that people aren't in this situation. But in the meantime, if you are expecting a service of any kind, you should expect to also pay for it. Paying tips is a part of the service. This is someone picking up your food and delivering it to your home. Why are your circumstances trumping their circumstances, especially when they are actually utilizing more resources. This is a yield versus reward situation. They are in hopes that the people they are going to deliver to are going to make it worth their while to have put gas in their car and driven through rain, snow, sleet, and all of these things. You need to give a respectable tip if you want the service. Period. The end. No tip, no trip. Mm, Coming up on DB. That. Oh, we'll talk in the break. Okay, talk in the break because Al has a different opinion. <laughs> Best selling author and alternative medicine advocate Deepak Chopra will be here live. And could you imagine a world without selfishness? We're talking about a possible pill that could get rid of people's big egos. It's a new year 
and DBL is all the talk. <laughs> Let's get it going. We had a lot to talk about last year. I'm flexing every day. And we're not stopping in 2023. <laughs> So Al disagrees with me on no tip, no trip. I am pro no tip, no trip. Yes, and we are, we need to be, this needs to be said, we are people that have worked in the service industry. For yes. sure. I get it. But I always, I, I get worried when people start using the tip as their decision as to whether they're going to do their job or not. You hired a service. This is what the service costs. I plan on tipping. But if somebody does not tip, you saying, hey, I drove through snow, it was raining, I need gas. We call that where I'm from, that's your problem. <laughs> My problem was I needed food and I, and I used your service. I don't think it's cool to not tip. I think it's actually quite a, a, a lame. Call it, a lame. Lame. Yeah. Yes, it's not yet. But I do feel like him, first of all, if I open my front door, and I know you feel like this, and somebody's videotaping me already, yeah. I'm already not on board with that. And you know, the, the idea that this person is like, well, I'm gonna decide whether they're gonna just uh, give my food away to a rando or d deliver it depending on like what I've done for them. I just don't like the power dynamic that that creates. I get what he's saying. I understand that if I don't tip, my food's gonna be the fourth meal that they deliver. It's gonna be cold and maybe some fries will be picked out, but I don't think that it's not gonna be delivered. But what about the power dynamic of people who believe that it is completely okay to ask someone to perform a service for no money at all? Like you're saying, because you answered my call or because the algorithm gave you my order, then you're at my beck and call? But doesn't the tip come after the service is completed? Generally, and most of them, right? you put your tip in before. Oh, really? So they can yeah, they see. I've ordered before. food here before. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to tip that guy. Like it's like at the desk. Right. And I'll tip them when I get my food, yeah. right? Some of them. Welcome back. This is crazy. If there is a pill to cure selfishness, would you take it? What about a pill to help with self-confidence or codependency? Well, it turns out researchers in Italy have identified a compound they say could actually help make people less selfish. It's not yet a drug, but it could be. So here's the question. If this were FDA approved, would you take it, Albert? Mm, I don't know if I would take that. I don't know if I need that, but I would take a pill that allowed me to get out of my own head and just appreciate the situation I'm in. Mm -hmm. Like any place that I am, Erica, it's always like, yo, I'm hanging out with my coworkers, or having a good time. Oh, I got that show tomorrow night. I should prep for that. Wait, I didn't put that on social media. Like I'm, 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 I'm never where I am. So that, that's, I would like to just enjoy where I am without the outside thoughts, you know? No, I, that's, that's really honest and very spot on. I agree with you, Al. On <laughs> yeah, <your thing. laughs> no, and I because I also recognize it in myself. Right, that's why hard. I see it's it hard in to you. Be present. Would you take yeah. that pill to be present in or something else? I would. I would definitely take a presence pill. I would also take a pill that I would um, actually weigh the opinions of others harder than it, I weigh the opinions of myself because mm -hmm. I, no one is harder on me than I am on myself. And folks have tried, mm -hmm. they really have. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, like if I just cared what everybody else thought versus what I thought about myself, I think I would be in a better situation. Mm. Jeff, would you take a pill to change your personality? Yeah, maybe a little bit to tweak it. What I, would it be? My anger and then letting things go, right? Like I walked in a bathroom yesterday and there was three urinals and the guy in front of me went in the middle. It's like, dude, so uh, <laughs> go in the left or the right. Don't go in the middle. And I thought about that for like a half hour. I love that. Yeah, that's it's like, funny. it's like, dude, I couldn't even focus on the rest of my day. I'm like, why did that guy go in the middle? Right. Does he not know what's happening in life? Yeah, that's you know point. what I'm saying, Sam. Yeah. I'm 
hey, I'm already on antidepressants. So yeah, mm. I definitely, I give me more pills to just be as calm, cool, and collected as I can be. Right. It's I, hard being like a parent. I feel like my whole challenge as a parent is deregulating myself so I can help regulate them. So I want a deregulation pill. Mm. But I mean, Disregulation, it, dysregulation I, pill. I, or maybe a pill to help you out with sayings. I, I'm not, I, <laughs> I am not trying to endorse anything here, but do we think that this is why people do take drugs? Because yes. when they're at a nightclub or something, people do take drugs because they want to feel that, to just get away for a second? It's I'm escapism. Yeah. Of course, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. So they make yeah. these pills. Yeah, yeah. they do. Okay. <laughs> they're not, just not, not regulated or deregulated yeah, or dysregulated <laughs> or whatever it is. Hey, give me those dysregulated pills. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, we're so excited because Deepak Chopra will be here live. There he is. We can't wait to talk with him coming up next. When you have a cavity, you end up at the dentist, getting a filling to repair the damage to your tooth. You often have two options, a tooth-colored composite filling or a silver-colored dental amalgam. According to the FDA, dental amalgam fillings contain liquid mercury. A viewer texted us to ask if dental fillings that contain mercury are harmful. So let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, the American Dental Association, and Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, co-medical director of the National Capital Poison Center. The answer to this question needs context. Here's why. The type of mercury used in amalgam fillings is called elemental or liquid mercury. It binds together with other ingredients in the filling, and once it's applied on your tooth, it hardens into a stable substance. The danger comes from the process of installing or removing one of these fillings, which can expose people to mercury vapor. When dentists drill the amalgam, the friction generates heat, and that heat allows mercury in the filling to escape into the air as a vapor. Because it's toxic through inhalation, if you breathe in those fumes, that's what can be dangerous. Both the FDA and the EPA say the amount of mercury that people are exposed to when they get dental amalgam fillings is generally considered safe for most adults and children over the age of six. But our sources say certain people should avoid getting these fillings, including people who are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, nursing, or those with kidney issues. So what should you do if you already have a dental amalgam filling like this one? Just leave it there. The FDA says removing intact amalgam fillings results in unnecessary loss of healthy tooth structure and exposes you to temporary increase in mercury vapor released during the removal process. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back to DBL. Our next guest has been paving the way in alternative medicine for the past 30 years. He's a New York Times bestselling author and joins us to talk all about his newest book, Living in the Light, Yoga for Self-Realization, which is the ultimate guide to an exciting and enlightening future. So please welcome Deepak Chopra. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Deepak, it's so great to have you back with us. Um, but first, we wanted you to just weigh in on what we were talking about previously about a pill to get rid of selfishness. What do you think about that? In my opinion, we will adjust to an instant society. There's no measure of your sanity. We live in a society where there's a pill for everything. And that's because we've confused ourselves with our selfies. So my answer mm -hmm. is, one more pill and that's what you become you know you become just a pill taker there's no long-term solution and when you stop effect anyway mm. well we don't want to become that we want to become better so let's hear from you when you first began your yoga journey 45 years ago did you feel intimidated to start like so many of us do you know, I come from a culture where yoga is part of our tradition and it's been there for thousands of years. And so it's <coughs> one a book I wrote just now is one aspect of yoga that uh, completes the totality of yoga. So, you know, there are eight limbs to yoga, social, emotional intelligence, the yoga postures that people practice when they go to a studio, breathing techniques withdrawal of the senses and learning how to navigate the inside of your body 
concentration, meditation, and ultimately transcendence. So in my tradition, again, as I said, there are four, four uh, phases of life. First 25 years, education. Second 25 years, fame, fortune, taking care of your family. Third 25 years, giving back. And the last phase, which I'm in now, preparing for the final chapters, which is death and self-realization. So for me, I've just followed my journey. What a beautiful outlook. What a journey it I has know. been, sir. Uh, just uh, personally, I'm, I'm on my 38th yoga class, and I'm telling you, it's changed my life. So I, I appreciate it. I pre yeah, well, thank you. And, and your book, you explain to readers how to be in the light. What was the most memorable experience that brought you into the light personally? Well, the most memorable experience was actually, I'm embarrassed to say, when I was 18 years old and in medical school, and we went through an experience as part of a medical trial or what you might say investigation or, you know, science, an LSD trip. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah. There you go. All right. So you talk about how important always sharing the truth is. So Deepak. My wife has this funny little habit, okay? And she <laughs> always wants to have a conversation with me once I'm leaving the room, like check out this video. So should I tell her the truth and say, I don't wanna watch that video? Or should I lie and say, okay, let's watch this video? <laughs> I should say, I don't want to watch it, but I hope you enjoy watching it. <laughs> All right, I'm, next time she does that, I'm like, Deepak told me yes. to tell you that. <laughs> That's great. Boom, end of argument. My man, thank you. Yes, good. Um, okay, so Deepak, we saw you address world leaders comparing them to gangsters. Is there anyone you feel represents what a true leader looks like? Well, Martin, Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr., a true leader. Nelson Mandela, true leader. Mahatma Gandhi, true leader. Abraham Lincoln, true leader. There are many, but right now I think the only two people I can think of is the current Prime Minister of Ireland and the uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. Yep. They're low key and very effective and honest and truthful. Mm. I, I was waiting yeah. for New Zealand. I was, yeah. I was waiting. I love her I love leadership. Jacinda. Love her. Exactly. Well, you do great work through your Never Alone Foundation for Suicide Prevention. How can loved ones help this younger generation feel seen and heard? We're talking in this campaign uh, through our foundation, uh, neveralone.love, of four things. Attention, deep listening, affection, deep caring, empathy, compassion, appreciation, deep gratitude, and uh, acceptance, radical acceptance of everyone just as they are. And we are creating online and offline programs to help people feel that they're never alone. Oh. And actually, our emotional chatbot, which is an AI, has intervened in 6,000 suicide ideations wow. and is talking to 20 million people all at the same time. It turns out, you'll be surprised, that teenagers are more comfortable talking to a machine than to a human being oh. because the machine doesn't judge them. Yeah. That was wow. powerful. We could listen to you all day, Deepak. Thank you so much for joining us. DBL Nation, make sure to pick up a copy of Deepak's newest book, Living in the Light, and visit neveralone.love for suicide prevention. Also, you don't want to miss the NFT collection Deepak is launching tomorrow. To learn more, visit nft.time.com. We'll be right back. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The U.S. began the day already $31.3 trillion in debt, according to the Treasury Department, and that's inching closer to the debt ceiling of about $31.4 trillion, the highest amount of debt the federal government can legally accumulate. We turn to a number of sources to answer the big questions, like first, why do we even have a debt ceiling? The Committee for a Responsible Budget explains the debt ceiling, or debt limit, was established during World War I as a way to make borrowing money easier and more flexible, and Congress has raised that limit many times since then. 
What happens when the U.S. reaches its debt limit? The debt can't rise past the ceiling. No more borrowing. So the federal government can only spend money it has on hand to pay for its obligations. In her letter to Congress, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen also warns the Treasury, quote, will need to start taking certain extraordinary measures to prevent the United States from defaulting, which essentially means doing some creative accounting on repaying certain funds and programs. Yellen expects spending only what we have and those extraordinary measures will keep the U.S. in the clear until at least early June. So what if we do default? Well, we can only speculate because, as the White House explains, the U.S. has never intentionally defaulted after not raising the debt ceiling, but warns of widespread economic fallout if it does. This Treasury Department report further explains, quote, credit markets could freeze, the value of the dollar could plummet, U.S. interest rates could skyrocket, the negative spillovers could reverberate around the world, and there might be a financial crisis and recession as a result of default. The report examines the last time we teetered on the edge of default back in 2011. Though Congress eventually did raise the debt ceiling, we came so close to the brink that the U.S. credit rating was downgraded, job growth slowed, the stock market fell, and financial markets were overall stressed for months. And right now in 2023, there's real concern we'll head back to that precarious territory with a vocal contingent of Republicans in the House of Representatives saying they will refuse to vote for a debt limit increase without certain spending cuts that could be really hard to agree on in this divided Congress. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Publicly releasing tax returns has been a tradition among presidents since Richard Nixon. Donald Trump broke that tradition, his returns only recently being released last December after a years-long congressional investigation. Verify viewer Scott wanted to know whether Joe Biden has resumed the practice. So, Scott, let's verify. Has President Biden released his tax returns? Here are our sources. Before the 2020 election, Biden posted his tax returns dating back to 2016 on his campaign website. Since taking office, he's posted his returns on the official White House site. He released his 2020 returns in May of 2021 and his 2021 returns in April of 2022. Vice President Kamala Harris's returns are also available on the same sites. So yes, we can verify President Biden has released his tax returns. Another source of controversy when it came to Trump's taxes was whether they were audited by the IRS, something that the agency has done since Nixon. That congressional investigation found the IRS hadn't done those audits most years of Trump's presidency. But since Biden took office, the White House has told reporters the audits have resumed. With your Fast Fact, I'm Casey Decker. Welcome back. We love sharing your comments. Lots of comments in regard to Deepak. Jamie says, Deepak's an incredible and inspirational man. Loved listening to him. And Stephen said, so calming. Could listen to him all. Does he have a podcast? Oh, yeah, he does. I don't know the yeah. name of it, but he does. Cool. Good Google. information. Google it, right? <laughs> Couldn't you say that about anything? If you're leaving a secret, <laughs> Zen. If you can watch the second half of the show online. Or you could Google it, whatever. Watch on YouTube, dailyblastlive.com or our app. But if you get the second half of the show where you are, here is what's ahead. Madonna is going on world tour. Is the material girl ready for a return to the stage? And Todd and Julie Chrisley have started serving time. But did they catch a huge break with cushy prisons? Cupcakes, pancakes, omelets, any recipe calling for eggs seems to require a little extra lettuce right now. Queries for why are eggs so expensive are a top search topic online. So is the price of eggs going up and why? Let's verify. We turned to several sources that confirmed, yes, on average, a carton of eggs costs you a lot more than typical. The USDA charts egg prices across the country. 2022 ended with the average cost for a dozen large eggs nationwide at $5.40. 
That's about $4 more than at the beginning of the year. And that's not even considering the typically higher priced varieties like free range organic. Chris Mullins with Virginia State University explains the two main reasons. An outbreak of avian flu that's devastated flocks and farms. The USDA has confirmed cases in nearly every state in the country since October. So that's been the, the, the big factor that's really caused a shortage of eggs. And the increased cost of grain, fuel, and other resources that keep farms going. If we are in an inflated state and, and prices are higher, that coupled with the uh, less layers and less potential eggs um, is, is a, a perfect storm. The newest USDA report shows 2023 began with a dip in egg prices overall, still about $2.80 more than the average price over the last 10 years, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics data, but Mullins points out headed in the right direction. We hope to see uh, that downtrend to continue, that, that we see that maybe uh, through the first quarter here in 23, it'll start to really go down. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Oh my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. So Todd and Julie Chrisley have reported to prison. The Chrisleys were convicted in June of defrauding banks out of more than $30 million. Julie, who was sentenced to seven years, was supposed to report to a federal prison in Florida, but instead she went to a federal medical center in Kentucky that has an adjacent prison camp. And it's not clear why she's at the medical facility or how long she will stay there. Now, meantime, Todd reported to this minimum security prison in Pensacola, Florida, where he will spend the next 12 years. Todd's prison life will include waking up at 4.45 a.m. before heading off to his work assignment. The prison also includes TV rooms, a theater, and outdoor activities. Erica, what do we do with um, nonviolent criminals? Is this too cushy or should they be with violent criminals? I don't know that, Sam. Um, I, <laughs> I just know that listening to the depths of their crimes on Shout Out to the Bravo Docket podcast, speaking of podcasts, um, is alarming. It it's alarming. us in our audience about like just the highlight. Well, essentially, they did cut and paste jobs on bank statements and documents, uh, literally scrapbooking, and um, saying that they had money that they didn't have in order to parlay loans from one community bank, and I'm saying community for a reason, um, one community bank to another. And taxpayers had to pay for that and people in that community had to pay for that. And here they are, high on the hog, flaunting their wealth on television. And I think people really need, you know, we say that punishment is a deterrent. It's a deterrent and a, a call to other people who think that this might be a way, like, oh, if I can live like this for X amount of years, then maybe I could do seven years in a cushy prison. Like, that's not a cakewalk. And also, the idea of restitution is a very real thing. We see this with Jen Shaw and her sentencing from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Not only everyone's like, oh, six and a half years, that's not a long time to be in a cushy facility, but also that's six and a half years plus $6.5 million in restitution. That's more money than she actually made. So was it worth it? That's a deterrent. Now, let me ask you this really quickly. I have to have follow up with Jen Shaw because a lot of people were saying Jen Shaw defrauded elderly people. Yes. And she got less time than the Chrisleys. I don't know, I can't speak to the nature of which, why that would be. I just know that they're both pretty egregious. Um, Jen Shaw not only defrauded elderly, she also defrauded people with dementia, mm. like people mm. who were unable to even give that type of um, approval for her to be taking money out of their you know, credit cards and accounts. So should Jen Shaw be in a maximum, maximum security prison with hard criminals? I don't know. Right. Okay. I really don't. What, do you think so? Does any you were going to say. Uh, well, I, you know, Jeff, I was just going back and forth uh, with the maximum security. Is it to punish or is it that we're worried about her escaping? I don't think that that's the issue. That's why I like they have El Chapo and people like that in the supermax kind of situation because he's escaped from prison. If we're talking about 
people that we're worried about being violent in jail. I understand having them in a different place, but first of all, that doesn't look like a cakewalk, even though I feel, still feel like it's too nice for what they did, the dementia. You talk, we talk about separating violent and nonviolent. That's violent to me. That, that's on the same page to go after somebody uh, that's infirmed and can't make decisions. How is that any different than, than knocking somebody out and taking their wallet from them? It's really, it's a, it's a disgusting act and maybe we need to start looking at it like that rather than just like whether you use the gun or not. Great point. All right, so you guys, great news. Madonna is going on her 12th world tour. She made the announcement in a, in a unique video with some of her pals like Jack Black, Lil Wayne, Amy Schumer, watch. Tropical on the island breeze, oh, yeah. all of nature wild and free. Oh, this is where I long to be. La Isla Bonita. Wait, hold up. That's a lot of songs. It's a lot of songs. You think people would come to that show? I'll be there. Well, I'll be there. You there? Oh, yeah, I'm there. There? there? Okay, so the answer is. F yeah. That's not an answer. Madonna, who is 64, <laughs> has been going on tour since the mid 80s. Her blonde ambition tour in 1990 made over 60 million. Her last two tours were back in 2016 and 2020. But this is the greatest hits tour, Jeff. Are you going to go or do you want to go if it was not super expensive? No, I'm not going. What? But I was just thinking, Jeff, like, sitting at that table, how many people didn't know the words to that when Madonna starts singing and they're like, yeah. <laughs> and they just like did the beat. They, you don't know the words to that song. But we all know the song. Do you know the words to the song? Mahasa bonita. Exactly. You don't know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I, I won't be going. Tickets are like $1,000. I mean, it, for me, it's not my bad, baby. Erica, mm -hmm. I saw you <laughs> singing and jamming. Are I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. When we first talked about this early this morning, I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then when I like saw it and heard it, I'm like, I might have to... I might have to save my little dollars. I think so too. I, I mean, it's like the suit, it's really, uh, for her to do the greatest hits is like her Super Bowl. So if she's coming to Denver, I'm She's coming to Denver here. in July. Let me I'm tell like, you something though. Marcy to told me last, last time she went Marcy, to- Marcy, our stage manager. Our stage manager told us last time she went to a Madonna concert. Marcy, she was three hours late. Oh, I did hear about that. See, man, I'm not, listen. That's not cool. No, that's not cool at all. But maybe she's grown and evolved, you know? I, Okay. How cool was her outfit? The, the gloves, the fingerless gloves, the jewelry. I felt like she looked a little strange. Well, I feel like she's had work done, but I think she yeah. likes that avant-garde look. Hmm. I think she looks cool. <laughs> avant-garde? Where's she's her eyebrows? It's avant-garde. It, it's That's a like a is thing she not now. Having, she, oh, it's not having like eyebrows a is a thing? People are bleaching their eyebrows like blonde and very light colors. That frightens me. I know. Like in a, in a way, like for real. Like when I can't see someone's expression, you know, like if I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, you know, like I'm curious, right? If you just have no expression, uh, I'm not down with that. You, so <laughs> I tattoo my eyebrows on. Well, good for you. Then yeah. we'll never have that problem. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good thing. What do you mean, ho, ho, ho? We're, we're proud. What are you, we're Santa? Happy. We were just having a thing. <laughs> I just said if you didn't, they have them tattooed. We're never going to have that problem. That was a compliment. <laughs> are you Santa? <laughs> can't. I'm just saying, people have to tattoo their eyebrows and fill in their eyebrows. I have my eyebrows like tattooed, you. too. What do you mean people yeah. like me? Yeah, because the people we're like glad you, you have eyebrows. To shame no eyebrow wearers? You said we're weird. It's, I didn't say you're weird. I said it looks weird. Yeah, it's a weird community. If I showed up to your house with no eyebrows, you wouldn't, you wouldn't acknowledge it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So, could we see a remake of the hit 1990 film, <laughs> Ghost? In a new Vanity Fair cover story, Channing Tatum revealed his production company has the rights to the original movie, and he's interested in doing a remake. But he said, without all the, quote, problematic stereotypes. Now, he didn't elaborate as to what they were, but the original featured this iconic scene between Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore and made more than $500 million. Now, some people have since taken issue with how Whoopi Goldberg's Oda May character was portrayed and said black and Hispanic people were shown in a negative light. Erica, what do you think about Channing Tatum remaking the movie and then also um, trying to be more woke about it?
or evolved. I yeah, say. I'm, I'm going to be really honest. I remember parts of the movie, but most specifically, I remember Whoopi Goldberg in the movie. Um, but I can't tell you details about it. And I think um, if we go through most movies that were made in that time and up until like yesterday, <laughs> um, you are going to see that very stereotypical um, play on people of color, period. And that is something that we need to be very, not only mindful of, but we do need to be proactive about making sure that people aren't stereotyped based on the color of their skin. If there is going to be a negative or negative character, that char character can look like anyone. Um, I don't, I, I, I would have to see what that project looked like for a remake of Ghost, and maybe it would interest me now. Uh, I just don't really remember a whole lot about the movie. Right. I, well, I just think, we're, Erica, we're going to be in trouble if we remake any movie yeah. from the 80s. Any song, any nur nursery rhymes, Ring Around the Rosie was about what the Black Plague or everything from back in the day was problematic in one way or another. And if we are going to go back and give an accurate portrayal of that time and tell of that time, it it's like the same way of saying, uh, you know, Biggie's from Bed Stuy. And we if we're telling his life story, if uh, we would there be some people on his block that were painted in a negative way, would they probably be African American or brown folks? Probably. But if we did that story now, Bed Stuy is a neighborhood that nobody in this room could afford to live in in Brooklyn so do we want to tell that story or do we want to tell how it was when people lived there so that's the decision that we need to have anytime we start talking about remaking movies because we're in this weird thing as a society where anytime we start looking back in the past we want to pick it apart now there's documentaries about Hugh Hefner and and the girls gone wild yeah it was all terrible but we were all a part of that people all bought that People all watch that. Yeah, but that. we've evolved. Yes, right. but now we've going going back and picking it apart, I think that's I more like self-flagellation. Uh, you had me up until uh, Playboy and, uh, no, they, and Girls it, Gone Wild. They were terrible. They were terrible people. <laughs> but I feel like we, as a society, were complicit. That was on television. That was you, on television. Network, no, I, yeah. I do understand. I know. I understand exactly right. what you're saying, but I also understand that much like um, the underbelly of a lot of enterprises that we celebrated and we put money into, um, people. It was very intentional for people not to know what they didn't know. Absolutely. Now, if we knew or society knew and excused it, I think those are two different things. But I don't think most people understood what was happening, you know, in the underground of the Playboy Man. When, when you're watching the E Network and you're seeing an 80 year old man uh, mouth kissing 20 year olds, you understand what's happening. People co sign and they watch that show for years. We are all complicit. I didn't watch that, but people, we, we're, that whole era, everything was problematic until it wasn't. So we have to be honest about who we were and take pride in how much we've evolved and take pride that you couldn't even pitch a show like that now. I'm proud of us as a species for moving forward, but we cannot go back and just pick apart the past and act like we are, everybody's got Why clean hands. Why can't we pick it apart? to be better why do we have to pick why does picking apart have to be a negative thing why can't it be as blatant as Channing Tatum said and just okay I want to remake this movie but I'm gonna have to write some of these wrongs but th but then that's not representative of that era do you understand what I'm saying? If you go back and do make it the that same exact way, he cannot. Then don't remake evolved. it. Set it now. Then yeah, yeah, yeah I'm down okay. with that, man. Yeah. Make goes now. All right. Who See, should really quickly? Who should play Patrick Swayze? I miss him. Channing Tatum. No. I think he's too like. No. It's got to be like a. Different kind like of a guy. Miles Teller, I think. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> From Top Gun, Goose's son. Oh, yeah. He'd be good. He still doesn't know. <laughs> I saw Top Gun. <laughs> I saw I was proud of myself. I got Top Gun because I got the surround sound. I want to hear the planes take off. We're going to get three white men, and you have to pick out Miles Teller. All right, we'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> Put your money up. Coming All right. up on DBL, a woman's confession on TikTok that she doesn't wash her pajamas after every wear has people divided. We're going to talk all about that coming up next. <laughs> It's a new year and DBL is all the talk. <laughs> Let's get it going. We had a lot to talk about last year. I'm flexing every day. And we're not stopping in 2023. <laughs> all right, Erica. Thank you. Yes. Explain to me, as I'm a person that's never seen a movie, explain to me what Ghost was about. Um, people who see dead people. Okay. I can <laughs> tell could, you. That could I, also be the sixth sense, but yes. I saw Ghost <laughs> once, but I do remember the iconic scene that everyone's talking about where Whoopi Goldberg is able to be um, 
a conduit. Oh, that's no. She'd go into. Yes. That. So yeah, what do you call? A it's medium? not. It's not a medium. It's a oh. conduit. I said conduit. Because you'd speak oh. for that person, oh. right? Right. So yeah, she right. was able to like. It's okay. So yeah. Demi Moore lost her husband, okay. and um, in order to for her to reconnect with Patrick Swayze, who's a ghost, who's passed on, she uh, had a romantic moment with Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, and in the movie, can the explanation be longer than the movie? Because I think we're about to find out. <laughs> huh? I know her. I was going to get to that part, but at first, I just wanted to talk about how Whoopi Goldberg became. Yes. Her explanations have a what intermission. Was the, what was the original question? I don't even know. Yeah, man, we're so far I, past I that point. Why her life's in danger? Somebody just the same guy that killed her husband, right? Yeah, it was yeah. like the Wall Street guy yeah. or his best you friend. You said you never saw it. I saw Ghost. You said you've never seen it. I've seen Ghost. It's a problem in the back. You I just said I've, no, I didn't see seen, ghosts. I've never seen Dirty Dancing. I never mentioned Dirty Dancing. Earlier today, you were talking he about He did. Dirty. This is embarrassing. Jeff got in an argument with me off camera saying, Channing Tatum for sure will be in it. He can dance. And I said, but there's no dancing in Ghost. And then he said, yaha, remember the part where they're on the log? And they, I go, that's Dirty Dancing. I, that story's false and made up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm offended by it. <laughs> yeah, go. Never happened. Welcome back. A TikTok <laughs> is going viral of a woman who wants to know if it's okay to wear pajamas multiple times before washing them. So take a look what she had to say. When I was younger, my parents always made us wear pajamas like more than like multiple nights in a row because they weren't dirty. And I still do that as an adult. I've worn these like three nights in a row. So I need to know if like as adults, we're still doing that. <laughs> So according to experts, okay, Erica, we're going to get to it, though, but according to Should experts. Should we guess first, or do we just want the expert opinion? No, we, you're right. I was going to go around the horn. I didn't know where the next beat was, but now. Because I want to say mine before I get the expert okay, opinion, so right? Okay, so let me hear yours. Well, I, I was going to say a week, right? Start the week off fresh. Seven days in the same jammies? Yeah, where else am I wearing them? I'm not doing construction in them. Yeah, but you're sleeping in them. Dude, you're sweating. night sweat. Sweating? Yes. You don't what? sweat at night? No, if I'm sweating... I'm naked, okay. and then he put on the clothes. Okay, seven nights for Jeff. What about you, Erica? <laughs> wow, I'm being that honest. was a judgy face. It was a judgy um, I would say twice or uh, two times during the summer, three times in the winter. Very particular. Okay, what about you? Yeah, I'm not wearing Why? pajamas. How about that? Same. Yeah, it's 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 box of briefs into the bed. But that's your pajamas. That, yeah, but I'm gonna wash those every day. Oh, so you're daily. But yeah, daily. I'm not gonna sleep in pajamas. I don't want to put clothes on to go to bed. Okay. What right. about you, Sammy? I'm, well, if I'm a hot sleeper, I do night sweat. So I would be sans pajamas, but if I do wear pajamas, I'm a two-dayer. Okay. Didn't I tell you to get the Uller? Two days? You haven't gotten the Uller yet. <laughs> yeah, what's the Uller again? Like the, it's like a cooling system for your bed. Oh, yeah, I need to get no. that. Yes. Eric is queen of sleep. She I, knows. I'm telling you. I know, I need the Uller. Okay, so you should wash your, your PJs every three days, Jeff. That's the expert opinion, three. Ooh, who's three, the expert, three. by the way? P sleep expert. Yeah, and cool. That's what you went to school expert. for? Nerd. Cleanliness <laughs> experts. In addition to PJs, <laughs> let's talk about how often you should wash other items, okay? So what about jeans? <sighs> Almost never. You're going to be disgusted. I'd say Almost every, never. like, three wears, because I like them to, to go back to feeling tight. No. I'm more like every three years. Yeah, it, you oh. don't need to wash at least jeans once that a much. year. Yeah. yeah. I'm look. Once I feel like once you wash jeans more than twice, they're done. Like with the, if they're black jeans, you gotta like you just get cheaper jeans. But like yeah, on the real, on the real, six months for sure. And you're wearing your jeans right now. Yeah, and I just washed them, so I got till the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for you. According to Good Housekeeping, three wears, or first of all, is also how you should wash your jeans. But then I want to know about this next uh, dish and hand towels. Uh, how often are you washing them? Washcloths, um, hand towels. I would say once a week, but you should have multiple on rotation. Okay, multiple on rotation. Once a week. Okay, yeah. any on rotation? You got to. <laughs> <laughs> 
Albert, you're in your kitchen. You got that little rag on your kitchen counter. How often are you washing that? All the time. Like it goes in um, like probably t every two, three days. I wash clothes a lot, so it's kind of weird. It's not good. Part of my ritual at night is putting a new kitchen towel out. Really? <laughs> every day? And I love it. Yeah. It, well, That's yeah, you probably, you also have two kids, so. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love but to that's go to not bed. For the kids, though. Let's be honest, Sam. You're just putting that out. I like to have a clean kitchen with a nice kitchen towel, and I actually have uh, different song lyrics that I put on my kitchen towels. Okay. Mm. Were you 16 nice. when you were doing this? What? Were you 16 when you were doing this? <laughs> no, I just thought okay. it'd be cute what, to have. What lyrics are on there? I'm curious. Uh, the one that's out right now, it's all good, baby, baby. All right, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Shout out to Biggie. <laughs> that's why you're my girl. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is daily, <laughs> daily. <laughs> now, how often do you wash Jeff bath towels? Oh, that's good. Jeff. Bath towels, listen, I'm gonna go once a week, man. Ew, Jeffrey yeah. Schroeder. Listen, I'm, I'm disgusting. Okay, <laughs> Erica. I'm also once a week with multiple on rotation. So does that make sense? Yes. No, it makes sense, but you're technically not once a week. You're using different towels, and then at the end of the week, you wash Why them. wouldn't yes. you reuse a towel that you dry yourself off with when you're clean? You're cl it, yeah, it's not getting as dirty as the other Be towels. I'm, I'm Team Jeff here. But realistically, yeah. it's Sunday football washing, so that, that's when the towels would go. So, yeah, it's once a week for me. I'm with Erica. I have multiple on rotation. At the end of the week, I'll wash them all together. But then you have wet towels just hanging in your... Yeah, no. ill mildew towels. No, yeah. no, no. Gross. That's not what happens. And then you use different towels for different things. Yes, but then they get wet, and then you let them sit around for a week. Okay, the answer is third. So it looks like three is like the main thing here. So okay. do I everything think people in threes. Are lying. Now, when is it time to wash your sheets and pillowcases? This, Albert. Uh, my pillowcase is just because, uh, and this is for Dre and Destiny, our makeup team, very important, especially like I get breakouts, so probably every three days. I'm definitely once a week, but twice a week in the summer. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm curious, why more in the winter with your clothes? You think you'd sweat more in the summer? I'm no, no, curious. no. Yes. I, would wa I would wash my stuff once a week in the winter, twice a week in the summer. Oh, you said like, or anyways, I, once a week for me. Sundays. Yeah, I'm gonna be like Same. start the week off I, fresh. I, I will say in college I had no idea you were supposed to wash your sheets. <laughs> That's no so clue. You fresh aren't the only or, one. Fresh I'm I'm being honest, I don't think men even know. You are do, not the I only one. I didn't know that until I was one. like twenty five. When I like my dad always thought that he would have to scare me away from boys. Freshman year scared me away from boys. Their bathrooms? Okay. Oh my gosh. We'll be right back. Their bathrooms <laughs> are horrendous. When you have a cavity, you end up at the dentist, getting a filling to repair the damage to your tooth. You often have two options, a tooth-colored composite filling or a silver-colored dental amalgam. According to the FDA, dental amalgam fillings contain liquid mercury. A viewer texted us to ask if dental fillings that contain mercury are harmful, so let's verify. Our sources are the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, the American Dental Association, and Dr. Kelly Johnson Arbor, co-medical director of the National Capital Poison Center. The answer to this question needs context. Here's why. The type of mercury used in amalgam fillings is called elemental or liquid mercury. It binds together with other ingredients in the filling and once it's applied on your tooth, it hardens into a stable substance. The danger comes from the process of installing or removing one of these fillings, which can expose people to mercury vapor. When dentists drill the amalgam, the friction generates heat and that heat allows mercury in the filling to escape into the air as a vapor. Because it's toxic through inhalation, if you breathe in those fumes, that's what can be dangerous. Both the FDA and the EPA say the amount of mercury that people are exposed to when they get dental amalgam fillings is generally considered safe for most adults and children over the age of six. But our sources say certain people should avoid getting these fillings, including people who are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, nursing, or those with kidney issues. So what should you do if you already have a dental amalgam filling like this one? Just leave it there. The FDA says removing intact amalgam fillings results in unnecessary loss of healthy tooth structure and exposes you to temporary increase in mercury vapor released during the removal process. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Day Till.
Welcome back. If you're looking to remodel your bathroom, make sure you do it in a way that suits your space. We're talking about it in today's tips sponsored by Jacuzzi. First, if your bathroom is small, build in, not out when it comes to storage. Next, keep the color palette on the light side. Painting a bathroom a lighter color will open up the space. And finally, hang hooks and shelves. This will free up counter space. If you want to start your remodel, Jacuzzi can help you do it the right way with a spa-like experience. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched, stress-free remodeling process, so visit Jacuzzi Bathroom remodel.com or call 800-523-1523. We'll be right back. The U.S. began the day already $31.3 trillion in debt, according to the Treasury Department, and that's inching closer to the debt ceiling of about $31.4 trillion, the highest amount of debt the federal government can legally accumulate. We turn to a number of sources to answer the big questions. Like first, why do we even have a debt ceiling? The Committee for a Responsible Budget explains the debt ceiling or debt limit was established during World War I as a way to make borrowing money easier and more flexible. And Congress has raised that limit many times since then. What happens when the U.S. reaches its debt limit? The debt can't rise past the ceiling. No more borrowing. So the federal government can only spend money it has on hand to pay for its obligations. In her letter to Congress, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen also warns the Treasury, quote, will need to start taking certain extraordinary measures to prevent the United States from defaulting, which essentially means doing some creative accounting on repaying certain funds and programs. Yellen expects spending only what we have and those extraordinary measures will keep the U.S. in the clear until at least early June. So what if we do default? Well, we can only speculate because as the White House explains, the U.S. has never intentionally defaulted after not raising the debt ceiling, but warns of widespread economic fallout if it does. This Treasury Department report further explains, quote, credit markets could freeze, the value of the dollar could plummet, U.S. interest rates could skyrocket, the negative spillovers could reverberate around the world, and there might be a financial crisis and recession as a result of default. The report examines the last time we teetered on the edge of default back in 2011. Though Congress eventually did raise the debt ceiling, we came so close to the brink that the U.S. credit rating was downgraded, job growth slowed, the stock market fell, and financial markets were overall stressed for months. And right now in 2023, there's real concern we'll head back to that precarious territory with a vocal contingent of Republicans in the House of Representatives saying they will refuse to vote for a debt limit increase without certain spending cuts that could be really hard to agree on in this divided Congress. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Publicly releasing tax returns has been a tradition among presidents since Richard Nixon. Donald Trump broke that tradition, his returns only recently being released last December after a years-long congressional investigation. Verified viewer Scott wanted to know whether Joe Biden has resumed the practice. So, Scott, let's verify. Has President Biden released his tax returns? Here are our sources. Before the 2020 election, Biden posted his tax returns dating back to 2016 on his campaign website. Since taking office, he's posted his returns on the official White House site. He released his 2020 returns in May of 2021 and his 2021 returns in April of 2022. Vice President Kamala Harris's returns are also available on the same sites. So yes, we can verify President Biden has released his tax returns. Another source of controversy when it came to Trump's taxes was whether they were audited by the IRS, something that the agency has done since Nixon. That congressional investigation found the IRS hadn't done those audits most years of Trump's presidency. But since Biden took office, the White House has told reporters the audits have resumed. With your Fast Fact, I'm Casey Decker. DBL Nation, it's time to spread the love. In case you haven't heard, our very own Erica Kopp has been nominated for an NAACP Image Award. Yes. And yeah. you should help the podcast win this prestigious honor. You have until February 10th to cast your vote. It's super simple. Just scan the QR code on the screen. Go to the podcast category, click on Outstanding Society and Culture, then cast your vote for Come Back with Erica Cobb. Also, you got to listen to the podcast, so don't forget to listen to that too. It's time. 
Um, congratulations, Erica. Thank we you. We love you. Proud love you. you guys. Quickly, we have, um, we mentioned Madonna. <laughs> no brows. Jeff, what do you think? So if I came to your house like that, you wouldn't have a question for me? See? I would think you look alien -esque. Yeah, well now, see, I'm not being point. a hater. You made your point. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs>